One of the biggest problems that anglers are now facing in the Gulf of Mexico is the amount of predators that we're seeing on some of the bigger springs, wrecks, uh, any type of big structure offshore. It seems like when boats roll up and you get chum lines going, you see we got a couple nice yellowtails here, that the, the predators show up. And by predators, I mean, you know, sharks, goliath grouper, and, and whatnot. So when we pulled up to the spring, it's about 50 miles offshore, got a nice chum line going, got the yellowtails, we could see them blow the boat, caught a couple, but then next thing we know, there were, you know, lots of predators showing up. So you'd hook a yellowtail. And then next thing you know, your yellowtail's eaten by something else. So the yellowtails we were catching, we had, I was using real light jig heads, so light hog ball, I think about an eighth ounce. By fishing lighter, when you're hooking them further up in the water column, you got a better chance of getting them because you, you're just not as far to get them into the boat. So the ones that we're seeing and catching were way up in the water column. But what I did anyway was I decided to uh, send the GoPro down onto the spring. I wanted to see, you know, exactly where these predators were in the water column um, that were eating, you know, our hooked baits or our hooked fish, not our hooked baits. Although we did hook some <laughs> on just shrimp and, and white bait and dead bait. Um, so as the GoPro is going down, there are fish all throughout the water column. We knew that. The first thing we see is uh, barracuda. So barracuda, I mean, they'll they'll definitely cut your yellowtails and whatnot in half. But usually, when that happens, is you'll you'll at least get the head back. They tend to go for the tail first, and then they'll kind of swim around and, and eat, eat the rest later. Uh, let me show. So the, we ended up having a lot of this happening. I think most of this was sharks um, down the water column. I mean, that's a that's a really big yellowtail, and and the problem was using light tackle. And you hook bigger yellowtails, they're going to fight longer, and it just gives the predators even more of a chance to to come find. You know, your, your hooked fish. Um, so we had a bunch of this, you know, break-offs, fish cut in half, and a little disheartening. So I send the GoPro down. So we see barracudas. They can be a bit, little bit of a problem, but normally you'll see them when they're they're kind of swarming below the boat, and they'll attack your fish right below the boat. So here's a school of them. You know, maybe a dozen of them, just kind of so mostly smaller ones. Um, obviously, they can be a bit of a pain. They got, you know, a lot of sharp teeth will break your jigs off. But I don't think they're what was causing us the majority of the problems this day. So we get down a little bit deeper. Another barracuda kind of inspecting. And start to see, I think, what the, the big problem is. There's an Amico Jack, and there's a big shark right there. The sharks are the most ferocious I think I've ever seen in the, in the Gulf right now. So there's some more sharks. Um and they will attack pretty much everything you hook. Um, tuna, amberjack, amico jack, yellowtails, just everything. So as it's going down even further, now we get into a school of goliath grouper. Normally goliaths would be hanging out pretty close to the bottom, but these were up in the water column. These were, you know, we're in 140 feet. These were probably in 100 feet. And so obviously they're also going to be attacking whatever you've got hooked and can easily make a meal of it. So the times we weren't getting broken off by toothy critters were most likely Goliaths just eating our fish. And then they're so big, we're using light tackle. They just kind of sit there and, and we'll swim down into the, you know, the spring, which you'll see here in a minute and, and break you off. Then, um, they take a little bit longer just cause they're not toothy and they're all they're doing is swallowing your yellow tails or whatever else you've got hooked. And, and swimming along with it. So another annoyance. Um, so as you can see, we're dealing with a lot of predators. Now, I was also wanting to see, you know, what exactly this, this I have it labeled as a spring, is. And so it gets down to the bottom. You can kind of see glass blocking the view right now. There's a nice edge right back there it's 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 dark it's a, the visibility wasn't you know great you can see a mangrove snapper over there and there's some fish on this um you know it ends up being like a wall basically um so mangrove snapper 
Um, the bottom is just kind of sandy around it, but the the structure is pretty awesome, and uh, I'm able to get a real good shot of it here in a minute. So when the GoPro gets stabilized, so there's more mangrove snapper. So we're pretty close to it. I dropped the GoPro pretty close, so I'll fast forward a little bit here to, to kind of show you what what this spot is exactly, and uh, some of the fish that that show up. Um, you never know what you're going to get on some of these springs. So there's, you know, mangrove snapper, especially in this depth. I mean, certain times of year, if the bait's around, tuna, wahoo, lots of amberjack in the, you know, cooler months. So there's some almaco jacks, um, some more mangrove snapper. We didn't even hook any mangoes this day. I, I think, well, we might have. I, I should take that back. If we hooked any of them down near the bottom, there's almost no chance we were going to get them to the surface with the, you know, the glass and the sharks and everything. So we might have hooked some. We probably lost, you know, 20 to 30 jigs just with all the predators eating a bunch of our hooked fish. Uh, so something real cool happens here in a minute. Let me fast forward to it. Okay, so I slowly kind of started moving the boat so you can see the bottom moving here. Uh, just trying to get a little closer to the actual number where the structure is so we could drop right on it. Um, so as the boat's moving... We get close to this wall, and you can see the school of fish here is is mostly mangrove snapper. There's just littered with hundreds, if not thousands, of them. Um, so the boat, nope, oh, that's a big amberjack. The boat will uh, slowly keep moving over here. You can see the school of uh, mangrove snapper as the boat inches along with the rodan, just kind of pulling us closer. See, that's a lot of mangrove snapper. <laughs> Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if we hook some, but normally we're trying to chum and, and get these fish up in the water column a little bit and make it easier to catch. So there's, uh, getting a little bit closer, creeping towards it. One mangrove swimming through. And so now the, the mangroves with the boat being a little closer, they're hanging real tight to the structure. I don't blame them. I'm sure if they got out away from it, they could easily get picked off by a shark or a glass. So can, now we're getting even closer. You can see the amount of them. Mangrove snapper galore. Pretty crazy. I'm sure the yellowtails were, you know, mixed in with them or, or hanging out, you know, up, up above it midway through the water column. We were, were chumming quite a bit. So they probably move around a lot in that situation. So as the boat's moving a little more, um, I get the GoPro pretty close to them, in them. Uh, there's a few striped grunts in there, but mostly the snapper. So the next thing that we'll see is the wall itself. But that's that shot right there is is pretty crazy. I think you know spawning season, the, the snapper in the summer definitely tend to to school up like this and so there's a lot of grunts there too so now we're starting to see some of that wall you can see it's undercut quite a bit so it wouldn't surprise me if you know some big grouper i'm sure the glass clean this out some big grouper you know mutton snapper cabrera snapper could all possibly inhabit something like this with that big undercut um, a lot of structure for them to hide in pretty awesome natural bottom so i think this is why people are, are naming this spot of spring just because you know there could be caves under there it could be all kinds of stuff I didn't mean to get the GoPro this close to it, but I'm kind of happy I did. Obviously, I got it back. Um, I'm sure divers that have been on this spot, you know, get up under there and, and see all kinds of crazy stuff. So the GoPro is kind of sitting on the edge of this. Um, so I had the camera down so long. There were actually two different uh, recordings made. The GoPro rollover. So here's about when I start to bring it up um, to the surface. So drop it back down just to kind of see if I missed anything. And so now it's coming up on this wall. I mean, it's probably 8, 10 feet high. Um, definitely pretty cool. And so you can see now some of the snapper have moved up to the top of it. And you can see there's these, you know, it's just basically a, a, a line straight down a big ledge if, if you want to call it something like that uh, pretty pretty cool spot obviously big natural structure like this uh, a lot of people know about it so there's going to be predators sharks glass 
that are now almost I believe they're they're coming to the boats. They hear boats show up and they're like, "Oh, we're going to get some some free meals out of this when they start fishing." Um so there were some amberjacks on this place too. As you can see, the, the, this little longer dorsal fin, a little taller fish is Almacos. There's a big amberjack right there. Um, the longer, skinnier ones. Amberjacks love springs, wrecks like this. So it's coming up through the water column now. It had sat down on the bottom for, um, I think, almost 20 minutes. And now the Goliaths are even further up in the water column. We were fishing the whole time, and I'm sure, you know, as we're hooking some of these Almacos or or whatever, the glass are getting a little more bold. And we could actually see some of them when we were hooking the Almacos. There was a big shark there, too. The glass were following the, the Almacos up pretty much all the way to the surface. So they're they're very aggressive, especially when they think it's feeding time. They're going to attack your hooked fish just because they're weaker and, and they're looking for a free meal. Uh, so as this wraps up, just be aware you, when you get on some of these springs, wrecks offshore and the sharks and the glass are, are attacking everything you're hooking, you know, all you can really do is, is kind of go to heavier tackle and, and try to horse some horse the fish that you're hooking up faster. Um, or, you know, chum heavy and, and try to get to the fish up to the surface. Use really light jig heads or no weight at all. And that's kind of going to be your, your best bet if you want to hook and, and catch some of these, you know, snapper and, and, and grouper or whatever might be, you know, down there. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do, but, you know, when you can time it right, it's uh, it's, it's definitely effective. So, hope you enjoyed. This is, uh, you know, another video. If you like these, feel free to subscribe, like the video. Thanks.